Hey YouTube, this is Mike, and I just wanted to share a short little snippet from this episode that I really enjoyed. However, if you want to listen to the full episode, either scroll down this post or head to mikejamesreed.com forward slash podcast for the full episode. Thanks and enjoy. But I've also done so much personal development, so much reading and listening. Like there wouldn't be a day that goes by in the last eight or nine years that I haven't listened to one to two audios, meaning podcasts, whatever you want to call it, and have read probably 20 to 30 minutes of a personal development book. I don't read any fiction, nothing like that. Um, and so I've constantly attacked my own level of art uh, because I've just watched so many people transform themselves by doing that. And so I just thought, well, I'm not really talented. I don't, I'm amazing at sports. I'm not amazing. At, I'm not super smart. I mean, that type of thing. So what can I do? I can work really hard. How am I going to do that? I'm going to attack my, I'm going to attack my mind and I'm going to build my mind like a mental muscle and I'm going to layer on it every day. And I have, and now that started compounding and sort of led to the life that I've got. So yeah, it was a long answer, but I think it's you know explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of gold in that. So much gold. And um, mate, I'm, I'm really already enjoying this conversation a lot. There's so many different things I want to ask you. Can I go back to one of the things you mentioned earlier on was you grew up with your parents traveling a lot and having babysitters a lot. This is really getting into the weeds around your kind of childhood experience, but how formative was that for you in terms of your development? Did you ever feel like you had distance from your parents? You know, what was that like to kind of grow up in that family to, you know, sort of still need, get the love that you clearly have from your family and from your parents, but yet while they were still at such a distance? That's a great question. I've never actually been asked that before. So I think. And my parents are traveling a lot during the 90s. And I think, you know, I've asked my dad in hindsight and mum about, you know, I, I don't think they would like to have traveled that much. So we're trying to establish a business around the world. And I think in hindsight, they wish they had spent more time in Australia rather than traveling. And I mean, I was pretty young at the time, 86, and they were traveling until I was about 10 or 12 a lot. And then they sort of tapered down in the late 90s and really stopped traveling as of the late 90s. And so I think, you know, I had a lot of babysitters growing up. So I met definitely a few characters and, you know, that type of thing. But um, we had a full time you know, full-time babysitter who lived in as well and looked after us all. I think in terms of development, you know, it's a tough one because you're seeing your parents also sacrificing and traveling for the life that you're living. And so I was always grateful and appreciative of that even before I knew what gratitude was. I mean, we got to travel with them a fair bit. Like we sort of, we went to you know Hawaii every year as a family and uh, been there a number of times now, probably up near 20 times. And uh, so they took us a lot of those trips with us. Um, I used to, my school teachers used to absolutely hate it because they you know hated us going out of school all the time, as you can imagine. We did a little bit of stuff with them. My brother was uh, six years older than me. So I think maybe for him, you know, there, he was a bit more in the really formative type of, you know, when you're in, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's a pretty, that's a pretty hectic time, you know, because you're in junior school and high school and all that. So I think maybe for him, that may have been definitely could have, um, and in fact, he's a development, he's a legend, but I think, uh, you know, he probably would have missed them a lot and that type of thing. We definitely missed them going away, but we also knew what they were doing. We knew they were going and serving and teaching and, and, and growing business. So I think it was difficult at times, for sure. I definitely miss my parents a number of times. You get, you know, really miss mum and that type of thing, but there was never any lack of love, that's for sure. Mm, fascinating. Because I think that's one of the things for a modern day family and especially where you've got entrepreneurs, you know, running businesses. And I'm curious to know what it's like for people where both parents are very entrepreneurial or maybe even running separate businesses and how they do that. And as you and I know, and anyone listening who runs a business, a business is a, a full-time job as well as being a parent's a full-time job. And, you know, there's only so many full-time jobs you can have. Talk to me about, and we'll get into more around you being a new father a little bit later in the conversation, I think as well, but, but you mentioned around personal development and your approach to layer upon layer upon layer to stacking this growth, I, I suppose, or the building the muscle of, of um, personal growth and personal development. How do you manage in terms of switching your brain off? That is another really good question. You've obviously had a lot of, ex it's interesting, the, the more questions you ask me, the more wisdom I realize you have, <laughs> because that, that is something I have struggled with a lot. I still struggle. I would not like to pretend that I have mastery over that. I do my wife. I actually went on a business trip to Bali 
in with a whole bunch of you know there's probably 300 people it was like an achievement award trip for part of our business and uh and everyone's there chilling in bali at the ritz carlton and man i'm in the gym pumping it and doing my thing running around networking meeting people and i just don't I, don't, I probably don't switch off that well. That's something I've never really, I've also got a very driven, I've got a high sort of temperament. I find readings, you know, that settles me a lot. I think meditation I've done sporadically. I, know, I always know that I need to do more of that. I do CrossFit, which I've done with you before. And so that um, that high intensity exercise tends to level me out a fair bit, which some people would argue, well, it doesn't. It drives your adrenals and blah, blah, blah. But don't worry about their opinion. I, I love it. It's, uh, <laughs> don't worry about those hippies. <laughs> don't worry about my Pilates friends. They're all right. I should do more of that too. But um, It's so funny you mentioned that. That around CrossFit and burning out the adrenals because have you ever come across Ayurvedic principles of health? No, I haven't. So really brief little tangent, Ayurveda is a certain form of, I think it comes from India and it's a framework around the body and the nature of human beings. And the framework says that we all have three types of natures, what they call three doshas or, or doshas. And it's either pitta, kapha, and vata. And each of those means something. And the idea is that if you look at a person from a distance, you can tell by their skin, their hair, their complexion, the frame of their body, you know, the muscle tone, all these kind of things. It's really relatively easy to identify what dosha they are. And when you know what dosha they are, you know they're a certain nature. They're maybe high tempo or they're up in the clouds or they're, you know, really slow and whatever it may be. And you can then balance that against their doshas by, you know, lifestyle decisions and, you know, do yoga as opposed to CrossFit. And anyway, short of it is I'm pitta. And pitta means that you're like fiery, type A, intense. And I would imagine you and I are probably quite similar. And CrossFit is a very fiery, intense activity. And probably like me, I'm drawn to it because of the fire. I'm, I, I want to throw myself into the fire, but that's not necessarily balancing my nature in a way that brings me back to a, a place of center. So it's this real dichotomy of I'm really drawn to something like that because I like putting myself into intense, fiery situations, but but it's the very thing that actually probably, you know, kind of burns out the adrenals and does all sorts of other things. It doesn't provide balance. Yes, that's right. That's really interesting. I'm going to have to look into that's fascinating because I've always found it equals and levels me out. And you know, I shouldn't even say just CrossFit. It's actually doing high intensity cardio, whatever that is, whatever form I go for a run, go for 5k, something like that, whatever I can find that it just does. Some, a meditation is very valuable. I mean, I've, I've found that awesome. But just I think going sitting sometimes and, and just trying to relax does help. Yeah, I just find that takes the edge off me, that exercise. It just clears my mind, keeps me sharp, keeps me focused. I try to exercise every single day. I'm doing CrossFit probably six days a week, harder some days softer some days to maintain that longevity but i train in some way every day now which is harder but it's also very rewarding 